Memorial High School, and uh, we're working on the lathe. Uh, one of my former students, Kev, came back to visit, and the students are all behind you, but we keep them off camera. Uh, but basically, we got the lathe here, and the lathe is from the lathe is from the 1940s, um, and it, uh, uh, it's a Sheldon lathe. It's an engine lathe. Uh, it can do threads and whatnot. But anyway, we're just doing a, a simple thing like a uh, cutoff. We already drilled it, and now we're using the cross feed. Uh, if you're getting close, while Kevin's moving the cross feed, you can see what this type of machine does. So you go over here, and you can put the camera right there. As he's working, I'll uh, explain basically, um, you have a, a cutting tool that's moving in like this at a certain exact speed that you want, and then you have the work is being held in a chuck that's spinning this way. So as the piece comes down, it gets a, a little chip gets cut. So it comes down, a little chip gets cut out. So this is kind of how the wave works. If you were to make a, a baseball bat, you would do it on a similar machine, but there's one over there called a wood lathe. It's just basically the same setup. You have the work is spinning and the cutter is just moving into it, right? Um, you can do precise measurements on this. And uh, if, there's, if there's two machines, if you were left on a desert island and you had to like save yourself, um, and you were left with two machines, but no equipment, but nothing else that you need, like all the, anyway, you had to make everything. You would need two machines. One of them would be this, the lathe, and the other one would be the milling machine. And these are the mother and father of all other machines, okay? Um, this is the basics right here, it's like a tree. So it would be like the mother father, and it would go like this. All the other machines are built based on this machine. Like uh, the parts are made here. So anything round would be made here. Anything uh, three-dimensional would be made on the, uh, on, the, on the milling machine, okay? Uh, so let's pay attention again and let's watch until uh, he cuts off that one piece. <laughs> there he goes. And it's cut off. Hit stop. Okay. And it fell. Yeah, and it fell down. No, it's right. It's literally right here. Oh, it's right there. Okay, so it's probably really hot. But anyway, what we did was that one little burr was left, but it's aluminum, so aluminum loses heat very quickly. Really? But, yeah. But basically what we did was we made our own little spacer. So it's got a hole in the center. It's very sharp on all the, and the face is smooth, super smooth, right? That one little burr happened at the last bit right there. So we would use a file to get rid of that and I can kind of take some of it off. Uh, but it's very sharp. And none of this is like, like it, you, you know, like this generation's used to like iPods and computers and stuff, that's all user friendly. This is not user friendly, this is the opposite. If you do something wrong, it'll either destroy the work that you're working on or it'll destroy the machine or it'll hurt you. So it's not user friendly at all. It doesn't know the difference between flesh and, and metal. So you gotta be very careful. Right? But, but you can make some amazing things and even though you, I don't know who is watching this but I hope this is for my students in the future but even though this machine, if you take a look at this machine, right, um, even though this machine is like foreign to a lot of people, like it, it doesn't, it looks weird, like what is this, right? Growing up if I saw this I would be like, I don't know, I don't know what this is, right? But believe it or not, this is how things are made. Uh, at NASA they have this. At where they make the cars, they make, they have this. Anywhere they make something, you need this machine and you need the milling machine to make round stuff and if you wanna make three-dimensional stuff. Now, everybody talks about the 3D printer. There's nothing really new about that. The only difference is that the milling machine is the 3D cutter, okay? And the, and the, the, the 3D uh, printer, all that is the opposite. It's adding material. Right, so it's an at, uh, additional manufacturing. Okay, it's not as accurate, 
uh, but it's also um, the, the bar, the cost to get in is a lot lower. So uh, also it, it's hard to break anything. If, you, if, you, if the print messes up, all that's messed up is the work. Whereas if you mess up something on, the, on, a, on a 3D cutter, which is a milling machine, you can actually damage the machine or yourself. So the, the stakes are higher with the, with the original equipment. And that's why not a lot of people know it nowadays. Um, but get familiar, get familiar with this. This is the lathe. And uh, Kevin's at, what, what is your major over there? Uh, manufacturing Technology. Yeah. Uh, Bergen. Manufacturing Technology at Bergen Community College. They teach this. They teach how to use the, the lathe. They teach how to use the mill. Now you're using manual machines, meaning by your hands, you decide the measurements. But eventually you get to a point where you're going to use automated machines and you're going to type in the program and it's going to do it for you. And so that's the advantage. So you could do repetitive work and you could do what's called lights out manufacturing. You could literally just close the lights, go home, come back the next day and all the parts are made. So, um, and that's the big comeback. So a lot of people say, did you guys ever hear, oh, everything's made in China. You ever hear that? That's not true. That's not true. Okay, because how do you explain Tesla automobiles? They're all made in California. How do you explain uh, uh, SpaceX, which is, the, which is the rocket company that returns rockets, all made in California, right? Uh, you know, just think about stuff that's made here. You know, maybe it seems like it was made in China, but it wasn't. And the advantage that they have now is that um, uh, over China is that they use automated machines like robots and automated machines like this, okay? so. And the reason that a lot of work went to China in the first place is because they pay their workers less. I don't know how much less, but I, I understand it's significantly lower. So what happens is that they don't have a, a labor cost involved in their manufacturing, whereas here we do. But if you have a machine that can make machines, then you don't have a labor cost either. You just have you and typing into the computer. Hey, wait. Long story short, this is a lathe. Get to know it. That's it. Okay, thanks. Mr. G, Memorial High School, I'm out.